I don't stand here to claim to be the conservative alternative to Mitt Romney. I stand here to be the conservative alternative to Barack Obama. I'm the only guy that hasn't spent time in Washington. And, uh, and, and uh, Senator Santorum and, and Speaker Gingrich, they are the very Republicans who acted like Democrats. And when Republicans act like Democrats, they lose. I believe that with your help in the primary, with your help in the general election, we can in fact develop an approach that will put America back on the right track. There's some other good news too, and it's an ongoing caucus, and it's over on the East Coast. I think it's the state of called Maine. <laughs> <laughs> He gets so fired up when he's delivering those speeches on election night, Ron Paul does. Rick Santorum, a huge night, Tuesday night and into early Wednesday morning, we should say. Think of this, Rick Santorum has now won four of the GOP's first eight nominating contests. If you look back at where he started uh, his campaign, that is quite something. Now. Three of them were last night. Two of them caucuses in Minnesota and Colorado. One, a primary in Missouri that did not have any delegates tied to it. That said, the Associated Press does a delegate tracker. And they assume and they talk to folks about their pledging delegates. Take a look at where we stand now. Uh, this is taking into a number of factors. They haven't really been assigned yet. They still go through a profit process in these caucuses, but this is the delegate count as it stands right now, as the Associated Press has it. And on the overview, you need 1,144 to get the GOP nomination, and um, there are a lot of delegates still out there. With that, setting the table, let's bring in our panel tonight. David Drucker, reporter for Roll Call. Charles Lane, opinion writer for the Washington Post and syndicated columnist, Charles Krauthammer. Okay, David, your thoughts on Santorum, the evening, and where he is in this race? Well, it was a big night for him, and nobody can take that away. What I want to know is what can he do with it? As we've seen with a couple of contenders in this race, by the way, including Mitt Romney, they have a good night, they have a good string of nights, and then they drop the ball, or they can't totally capitalize. So let's see, number one, how Rick Santorum does in the spotlight with the scrutiny of the press, with the scrutiny of the Romney campaign going after his record. He might do very well and, and continue to grow his support with, with voters, but he might not. Let's see if he can do a better job raising money and putting together a national network than he was able to do after the Iowa win. And I understand it was a little bit in contention, but we all treated it at the time as a very strong, surprising night for him that belonged to him. And then we moved on to New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Florida, and he was nowhere to be heard of. The only thing I would add, and again, this doesn't take away from his achievement, but it opens him up to questions about what he can do with it is that he's been able to rise and do extremely well while Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich were beating the living daylights out of each other, running negative ads on each other and all of that. And in fact, Democrats and unions have been all over Mitt Romney as well. So now what can Rick Santorum do that he's really in the mix? I listened to a lot of analysts today, Chuck, and, and some of them said this night may not have been all about Rick Santorum and may have been a lot about Mitt Romney and this bubble of inevitability and the fact that losing in Colorado made some people gasp that, wait a second, maybe this guy isn't as inevitable as, as once believed. This was uh, a disaster for Mitt Romney. It's not a fatal disaster. He can come back. But he had come out of Florida very strong and immediately sort of stepped on his message with this incautious remark about the very poor. He spent about three or four days explaining that away. And in politics, when you're explaining yourself, you're losing. And he's now explaining more. He's explaining kind of why Colorado didn't go the way it was supposed to. He needs very rapidly to get himself back in a position where he's not explaining himself and instead has got a positive, vigorous, affirmative message out there because that's what Rick Santorum has. He has the I'm the conservative uh, to go against Barack Obama. And it's it, it's going to be very tough to beat him in Michigan, even though that's Romney's old home state. Romney held his first... Uh press briefing uh, in, I guess, uh, a week uh, on the tarmac. We saw a little clip from it earlier. Here's another clip, and he's directly going after, now, Rick Santorum. Under Rick Santorum, uh, he raised, voted to raise the debt ceiling, I believe, five different times to a tune of about an additional $3.5 trillion. I, I believe that while uh, Senator Santorum was serving in Congress uh, and the Senate, Government spending increased by some 80 percent. Republicans spent too much money, borrowed too much money, earmarked too much, and Rick Santorum and Newt Gingrich 
have to be held accountable. Mitt Romney is saying that I'm not a, I'm not a conservative. I mean, that's just uh, that's almost laughable for a moderate uh, uh, Massachusetts governor uh, who has been for big government programs. He says I, I earmark. He's with this for the biggest earmark in the history of the country. It's for the Wall Street bailout. He went on to say the governor of Massachusetts advocated for more and more money coming to his state. Charles, what about this back and forth? Well, you knew that the morning after it would start, and Santorum would be the recipient of a lot of incoming from Romney. But if that's all Romney can muster, it's not going to be a lot. I mean, earmarks is an issue, but look how Santorum parried it. He did it rather well, rather than going into a long argument about the virtues of earmarks, and there are arguments you can make in, in favor, or denying or getting upset about it and acting as a victim the way that Gingrich did. He simply lobbed the ball over Romney's head over that net and said, earmarks, you're the biggest earmarker of them all with the bailout. And that, I think, is extremely effective. He can keep his composure and not act as a victim and just uh, hone in the message, I am the conservative. I think he, he'll be able to, to do well. But I want to emphasize about last night, he won in Missouri by 30 points. He won in Minnesota by 28. And in Colorado, where Romney in 08 had beaten the McCain 60 to 18, he beat Romney. So that tells you this is real weakness by Romney. And Santorum right now is in a pretty good place. Whether he can get the support, the money, uh, that he needs to carry on, we don't know. But he's in a place to make a run. I mean, think back when Senator Santorum was on center seat on this very show, and he was one of the first uh, candidates to sit in the middle of the panel and answer questions. Uh, he was possibly going to miss uh, qualifying for one of our debates at 1% in five recent polls. Did you ever think four out of the first eight? There have been a lot of Lazaruses in this campaign enough to make you a believer in resurrection. Uh, what was interesting about him is that even when he was in the debates, they always had him on the flanks, on the outside, way out there. And he'd kind of raise his hand like a schoolboy and say, well, nobody call on me. Well, they're going to call on him now. David, we've got Maine, the results of the ongoing Maine caucuses that uh, Ron Paul referenced, and he's uh, hoping to do well there. And then you have Arizona and Michigan, the big contest at the end of the month. And those are going to be huge because they're regular primaries, and this is where Romney should, A, be strong politically, given um, the demographics in Arizona, and he's a native Michigander. Um, but two, it's where supposedly his money and organization should be able to help him achieve results from his strong political base. And that could be another turning point in the race, although I'm done saying that anything is for sure in this long campaign. Yeah, quickly, Chuck, Newt Gingrich and his possibilities now, if he somehow is out of the line of fire, at least momentarily, from Mitt Romney. Well, uh, he's going off to Ohio. He's decided that's where his strong point leads. I think uh, next to Romney, the biggest disaster, it was a disaster for Gingrich that Santorum did so well. Don't, don't forget, just a couple of weeks ago, he was demanding that Santorum get out of the race and clear it for him. So now he's got to compete. He's still competing with Santorum for the same voters. Next up, the president's health care law and religious liberty.